What's up everyone, I'm back in the shop with another three cylinder Yamaha diesel engine. I have a couple parts laid out on this table. Most of them have issues and I'll walk you through them in today's video. Hopefully by the end of this video, you guys will be able to understand why this engine has to be rebuilt. And then in the near future, I will tackle a rebuild. So if you guys are interested in that, hit that subscribe button down below and turn on your post notifications so you don't miss out on that video. But right now, let's assess these parts together. The first two parts I'll talk about are the crankshaft and the camshaft. Both of these parts have been measured with an outside micro and according to the original specifications, these two parts can be reused. But there are some things that I don't really like about the crankshaft and I'll share them with you right now. The first thing I found that I don't like about this crankshaft is that there's a groove on the surface where the oil seal will ride. And now if I install a brand new seal, that seal will ride in the exact same groove. And you're not allowed to have that on an oil seal because this groove can damage your new seal. So what I'll do is I'll polish this groove out so when I put the new seal on, it will be one surface. Another thing I found on this crankshaft that I don't like, these oil ports or oil passages, uh, the chamfer around the oil passage itself is a little bit higher than the surface of the journal. So it's not on all of them, but I noticed the chamfer is just a little bit too high and I don't like the finish on them. I'm gonna have to polish the outside perimeter of this chamfer. So I do not have any high spots that may be even bigger than the diameter of this bearing journal. You'll see why I'm mentioning that because on these main bearings, you can see that there's a line towards the middle right there and right there. And that's actually worn a little bit more than the overall surface or width of the surface. So now when we actually line this up to the crankshaft, you will notice these two lines towards the middle must be from those chamfers. I shared with you guys the issues that I found on the crankshaft and it's just up to me to touch that up and make it better. The camshaft on the other hand is great and I can reuse it the way it is. But right now I'm gonna share with you guys the parts that I have in the middle of this table. Between these two parts, there's one more important part and that is the idler gear. This is placed in between the crankshaft and the camshaft and this will make up your timing. This is a very vital part for your engine. And I found something that I don't really like. There's a bearing insert on the inside of this idler gear. And as you can see, heavy damage uh, from something right there. And then all the way around the perimeter, there is wear and there are scratches, just heavy scratches actually. So what does that mean? There must have been something that went into here. So I had a good look at the other part that actually gets inserted into the bearing insert. So I went around the perimeter and the surface measures very good but when we come up to this corner right here you will notice there's a little bit of damage and i highlighted that right there i don't know if you can see that but that is a bump so whoever installed this part into the bearing insert scratched it all the way through so that scratch right there must have been during the assembly process and if it's close enough to the edge where it still rides on the bearing insert it could have caught on the bearing itself and that's why you can see some lines around the perimeter. So what does that mean right now? This bearing insert will have to be pushed out and I will have to install a brand new one. But on the other side, I also have to shave down this bump or this dent. So as I install this part into the new bearing, it does not get damaged. That bearing insert isn't the biggest issue on this engine, so now I'll move on to the valves. I have six valves laid out, three smaller valves for the exhaust, and three bigger valves for the intake. This right here is cylinder number one, two, and three. And number one is actually pretty good for the intake. I could probably lap this one in again and it would be good to go. But when we compare number one to number two and number three, you'll notice a big difference. So when I give you guys a close-up view on number one, you will see the chamfer is pretty consistent. Number two is slightly worse because you can see a little bump right there and this surface actually isn't straight anymore. It has a little radius to it. But then number three is even worse. It has a bigger step and the radius is even bigger. And what that means is this surface going up against the valve seat has worn out over time and it has made a radius. You always want a chamfer between your valve and your valve seat so it seals off properly. If I can reuse these valves and recut them at the machine shop, I will do that. But if I can't reuse them, I will need a rebuild kit with more parts. Right now, I'm going to talk about the oil pump and the fuel pump. On the right, I have the oil pump and on the left, I have the fuel pump. Let's talk about the oil pump first. So when we look at the oil pump, the inner rotor is in great condition, or at least the surface. The top surface, it looks very nice. 
and the inside diameter of the housing looks very clean and there's no scoring. So I think the oil pump did what it was supposed to do. It supplied enough pressure and enough oil to the engine. Now over here on the outer rotor, you will notice the surfaces are in great condition, especially the outside diameter and the inside, it looks all very healthy. So these two parts can be reused. Now this, on the other hand, is an aluminum cover that gets bolted onto the oil pump, just like that. And what's really important is that this surface is perfectly flat and that the surface where the outer rotor and the inner rotor turn, that this is also perfectly flat. As you can see, it is a little bit scored uh, and there's not much of a step, but what I will do with this part, just to make it even better, I'm going to lay it flat on a piece of glass and I'm going to lap it in just to get rid of these little imperfections right here before I put it back together. So I think once I do that, I can reuse this oil pump and hopefully we have enough oil pressure. But now over to the fuel pump. This fuel pump looks identical to the oil pump, but the only thing is that this supplies fuel to the injection pump. This fuel pump is also driven by the injection pump off this gear. For some reason, the John Deere 1445 came in with two pumps. This one was the original one, I believe, and they also put a brand new one onto the injection pump. As you can see, the surfaces on this pump are much better than that surface right over there. So there shouldn't be anything wrong with this. The gasket is still in one piece, so it probably wasn't leaking. And the inner rotor and the outer rotor that are inside of here are in great condition. So I'm not exactly sure why they swapped this out for a brand new one. And maybe they also had an issue with their fuel supply. These pumps look pretty healthy in my opinion. The only thing I'll do is I'll touch up that oil pump cover and then I should be good to go. The fuel pump on the other hand is kind of weird. Why do they have two fuel pumps? One new one on the injection pump and one old one that looks great that's on this table. So I'm not really sure why they replaced it, but I'll figure that out in the near future if I wanna go ahead and start this up and it doesn't start. But right now I'm gonna move on to these two covers that I have on this table. You guys saw the disassembly process. Uh, this surface was full of silicone. Whoever put it together just loved that stuff. Uh, but I removed it pretty good and I found some imperfections on this surface. But since they didn't clean it off with a power tool, I believe it's still flat, but I'm going to have to check that out. Now over here on the seal, or at least on the main seal surface, when I removed it, I saw the seal was kind of damaged and I'll show you why. On the front of this part, you will notice there's an imperfection right there, an imperfection right there, an imperfection right there, and right there. So it seems like somebody was hammering around the perimeter to get that seal in but they damaged the aluminum itself. And when we look at the inside, it's kind of hard to pick up, but you will notice there is a little dent on the inside diameter. So right here, where it gets bigger, there's actually a bigger dent. So right there, you can see the aluminum is kind of lifted. Right there, right there you can see it. And right here, it's even a bigger surface. So I think the main seal on this side was leaking because of these imperfections and it couldn't seal along the aluminum housing. Those are some of the imperfections I found on this smaller cover. And if you're already installing a brand new seal, you want it to seal on the inside diameter and the outside diameter. This seal probably didn't seal on the outside diameter and that's why this engine was leaking. But let's have a look at that bigger cover because there are some bigger issues. This right here is the oil pan extension cover and the bigger surface mounts to the engine block and the smaller surface on the bottom that ends a little bit short goes up against the oil pan. Now I'm having an issue with this oil pan extension cover because it has a weld in it. As you can see down here, the previous owners probably broke it off and they welded it together again. The weld goes from this point all the way to this point. There's weld that goes up all the way to the surface and on this side too. And when we flip it around, that's exactly why it hasn't been painted right here. It looks like they kind of broke this off for some reason. I don't know how, I don't know why, but what's really important on this plate is that it's perfectly flat because this does go up against the engine block. When I put a straight edge from this corner all the way to this corner, there is a dip right in between this bore and this bore because they used a power tool and they actually just made a radius right here. So now if I wanna seal this surface up against the engine block, I'd almost have to use as much or even more silicone than they used to seal it off between this bore and this bore. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with this oil pan extension. I could give it to a machinist and they machine it flat, 
That means it would go up against the engine block just fine, but I'm not sure how good the welds are. Maybe the welds are leaking and then this engine will always leak over time. And I really don't want a rebuilt engine to leak for the next 1000 or 2000 hours. I just want everything to be sealed off and I don't have any issues. So I'm gonna see what I can do with this. Maybe I'll even find a new one and then just replace it. Now I'm gonna move on to the pistons and the engine block and I'll see what kind of issues we have. This one is scored, this one is scored, and this one is scored. These pistons are heavily scored and they're worn to the point where I can't reuse them. These cylinder bores, on the other hand, are also worn, but they're also scored. I will have to rebuild this engine either with original size pistons. So that means buying the exact same piston size and inserting a sleeve or going with an oversized piston and just boring it out. So those are the two options I have. Boring it out will be cheaper than inserting a sleeve. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do just yet, but that's something I will have to do in the near future. The other question I'm asking myself is why are these pistons so heavily worn and why does this engine block already have to be rebuilt? The John Deere 1445 just has over 1,000 hours and that's nothing for a small diesel engine like this. These should last over 4,000 hours at least. I think it really comes down to who maintained this machine and how they maintain it. By the looks of it, the oil pump should have supplied enough oil to this engine because it is still in very good condition. So I'm not exactly sure why this engine failed, especially on the skirts of the piston and the cylinder bores. Another thing I like to check is the play between the wrist pin and the connecting rod bushing. So that's this point right here. And if you have too much play in either direction here, what that means is when your piston goes up and down, you'll have too much play in your cylinders and your piston will actually go up and down just like I'm showing it right here. What that means is you have too much play and your piston won't move evenly up and down, causing the piston skirt and the cylinder wall to wear unevenly. So I'm not exactly sure why this is so heavily worn. If you guys have any ideas, drop a comment down below. Maybe you guys have experienced something like this yourself or you've already seen something like this happen elsewhere. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned I wanna share with you guys what happened with this engine. I'm not exactly sure what happened with the engine block or the pistons, but it could be due to insufficient oil supply. Looking at all these smaller parts, there are small flaws, but those add up to become a bigger issue, especially once your engine is assembled. At the end of the day, I think it just comes down to the poor craftsmanship by the previous mechanic that worked on this before me. As you can see, there's welds over here, there's damage on this little cover, there's damage on the idler bearing, and there's even some high spots on the bearing journals of the crankshaft. Adding that all together could cause a major engine failure and it didn't happen before me, but I'm probably lucky that I didn't start it up just to see if it runs. I think I gave you guys enough information on this Yamaha 3TNV82A engine. If you guys wanna see a rebuild, hit that subscribe button down below. I'll be featuring this engine in an upcoming video. And if you guys enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button down below. It helps this channel grow a little bit, but it also gives me feedback if I'm doing a good job. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in an upcoming video. Peace.